Hey everybody, welcome back to Vegas Weekly for Saturday, November the 6th, 2021. Glad to be here with you today. I wasn't so sure yesterday if there was going to be a show. I got the uh, booster vaccine on Wednesday and uh, as with uh, shots number one and two, it kind of hit me hard. And uh, until about uh, early this afternoon, I was not uh, feeling like this was going to happen. I thought I was going to have to go online and be like, sorry, Vegas Weekly's been delayed, but um, feeling much better. Uh, looking forward to getting back to a normal life here tomorrow. Unfortunately, that means going to work, but uh, uh, yeah, that's all right. And there's a number of news items I wanted to talk about today. Um, and the biggest one is uh, the one we'll take right out of the gate. A letter uh, was leaked, I guess. I doubt it. Well, it was probably leaked. Uh, was leaked uh, just a couple of days ago from the folks at MGM Resorts. It was a letter addressed to the uh, employees at the Mirage, letting them know that... Uh, MGM is planning to sell that property, certainly one of the iconic properties in their portfolio, in some ways maybe their most iconic. Mirage, of course, has been around since 1989. I think we talked about that last week, um, that it's been there now for 32 years and remains uh, at one of the more I think successful, one of the more popular resorts. I know I have a number of friends who are very fond of staying and playing at the Mirage. Myself a little less so, but uh, a good property. I've had some decent luck there over the years, and my one stay there was pleasant. So um, a good property, uh, an older property, but certainly one that still has a lot of uh, years left in it. And now it sounds like it will be leaving MGM and joining a uh, new casino company. Uh, of course, the question is, who or what is going to buy this property. Now, there had been some speculation that I heard a few weeks ago that uh, perhaps Phil Ruffin, who owns Treasure Island and Circus Circus, might be in the market. But the latest that I've gotten on that would suggest that that is not likely to be the case and that uh, he will not be purchasing the Mirage. Uh, then you start thinking about some of the usual suspects. Um... Penn National comes to mind. Uh, it seems like they were closely involved in the negotiations at Cosmopolitan until the very last minute. Um, we continue to hear that the uh, Hard Rock would like to once again have a presence in Las Vegas. And uh, while there has been speculation that that might end up being uh, uh, the Caesars sale of uh, a place like, say, Bally's or Planet Hollywood. Uh, certainly the Mirage would be another property that uh, would make a certain amount of sense. With MGM acquiring Cosmopolitan, um, it does kind of make the Mirage sort of stand out as uh, kind of an outlier. If you look at the Las Vegas Strip and start now at the Bellagio and continue to the south, which is kind of what we've been doing uh, on our strip walk, which continued in just a few minutes, um, you discover that it's just one long stretch, or will be just one long stretch of MGM properties. Um, so it's kind of like a giant mega mall of gambling and entertainment and uh, um, hotels. Much as you get a similar experience on the opposite side of the street, where from Planet Hollywood on the south all the way up to Harrah's on the north, you have nothing but Caesars properties. Now, of course, the exception with Caesars is Caesars Palace. It doesn't seem likely that property is going to get sold under the circumstances, but Mirage did kind of stick out as being kind of not within that sort of mega mart of casinos. So I guess maybe that makes a certain amount of sense. Nonetheless, this does seem to come out of left field. I had not heard speculation about the Mirage, except, you know, in sort of the broadest terms. Well, maybe they don't sell the Mirage, but, you know, that kind of falls into the... Uh, uh, the, you know, the rumor mill, I guess. Um, but I don't know. Um, my friend uh, Ace, Eric, uh, Ace of Vegas, uh, did a, a piece a couple of days ago on the sale of the Mirage. He actually reads through the letter as well as some uh, frequently asked questions 
uh, that um, employees might have had about the situation and kind of talks you through it. Also in terms of the My Vegas rewards, which of course Mirage had many My Vegas rewards available. So I'm going to go ahead and put a link to that broadcast in the show notes below. So definitely check that out if you'd like a little more information about what's going on with the Mirage, at least as best we know. And as uh, time goes forward, I guess we will uh, see what we will see. Uh, a couple of more news items. Um, it now sounds very much like the uh, sort of pop crooner of the 21st century, Michael Buble, will be uh, starting a residency at Resorts World coming up sometime uh, later this, well, later in this coming spring of 2022. That's expected to be announced and made official sometime in the next week or so. Um, along those same lines, we have seen a couple of cancellations or at least delays in Las Vegas residencies. Uh, a couple of weeks ago already, we heard that KISS, which was planning to uh, to do a number of shows, uh, though all of those shows have been canceled. So I don't know exactly the circumstances there, but uh, if you've been dreaming of seeing KISS in Las Vegas, and it doesn't sound like that's going to happen at least any time in the near future. The other delay that we heard was on Celine Dion, who of course had signed on also at Resorts World to perform, and that was expected to start sometime this next spring as well. Uh, but she's had some health issues apparently, and uh, so that's been delayed uh, indefinitely. So we'll keep our eyes on that. On this show not too many weeks ago, we talked about the Fontainebleau that later became the Drew and now is back being the Fontainebleau and the concern uh, with Marriott jumping out of that particular uh, arrangement that perhaps the Fontainebleau was not to be. Um, but now it's, uh, I, I had some indications earlier on from my uh, friend Vegas Visual who said that I could quote him on that, that uh, that project would continue on. And uh, I'm beginning to see some indications that uh, things are happening at Fontainebleau. So we may yet see a resort in that location. And that would certainly be some really great news. I mean, you got to still be thinking 2023 at the earliest, but uh, it's good to see some activity going on there. More action on the north end of the Strip. All right, it's going to wrap up the news segment. We'll be back in just a few minutes to continue our virtual Las Vegas Strip Walk. Stay tuned. Okay, welcome back to the show. As uh, those of you who've been following along the past several weeks know that we've been doing a virtual strip walk. We started way down, I guess, really at the Las Vegas sign. And have been making our way up to the north. Uh, when last we left our hero, he was uh, outside the Treasure Island Resort. And... Uh, so the next sort of attraction, if you will, on the Las Vegas Strip is across the pedestrian bridge and is the Fashion Show Mall. Um, there are a number of shopping centers, shopping districts in Las Vegas, many of them located within casinos. Even something like Caesars Forum is still closely associated with one of the casinos. Same thing with the Miracle Mile shops uh, attached to Planet Hollywood. But the Fashion Show Mall is a completely independent venue, has no connection to any of the uh, casinos nearby. In fact, there really aren't that many casinos nearby. Uh, the closest casino to the north would be the New Resorts World. But the Fashion Show Mall does have one advantage over almost any mall in the Las Vegas Strip area, and that is that it is much more like your traditional mall. So if you're just looking to uh, pick up some items, do a little shopping, and you're not uh, flush with cash, perhaps you need a new pair of shoes, or, uh, you know, just something from the mall, or perhaps you want to check out the food court. They do have an elaborate food court. There's a lot of inexpensive places to eat at Fashion Show Mall in general, or just outside of it. So the thing about Fashion Show Mall is you can't really get into it immediately from the south. You kind of go around and enter um, on the east side there. Um, and you kind of have to go in and out on that side. There is a way, I think, to exit into a parking area on the north. Um, but uh, that is one of the confusing parts about Fashion Show Mall. Um, it is on three levels, um, although there's kind of intermediate levels on one of the floors. 
um, towards the end. And as I say, the food court area um, is on a third level um, that, uh, as I say, is quite large. Um, but again, if you're just looking to do some shopping, the Fashion Show Mall is probably a good option compared to most of the other shopping areas on the Strip. Now, last week I said we would continue on from Fashion Show Mall and go to Resorts World. And then I realized something very important. I really don't know how to tell you how to walk through Resorts World. There are, uh, I'm afraid to say, uh, probably a hundred videos out there of people walking through Resorts World and showing you around. And I would certainly encourage you to check those out uh, because they are uh, worthwhile. Uh, as they say, my initial impression of Resorts World what is it? it was a very nice property. Um, nothing about it that was offensive or unpleasant, uh, but it felt a bit like a shopping mall. And that is sort of the impression that I got uh, from my limited time there. But since I don't really have any good tips about telling you how to walk through the Resorts World area and get to the places you need to go, uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut this walk somewhat short to the north, and we're going to cross the street and head over to Wynn Encore, which I'm much more familiar with. And I'll give you some tips about wandering through Wynn and Encore. Now, the first tip is that it's a huge property, much like uh, the Venetian and Palazzo, which we'll talk about a little bit next week. Uh, Wynn and Encore take up a, God, it must be a half a mile real estate. Um, so it's not like one easily accessible property. You have essentially two entirely separate hotels, uh, hotel towers, uh, casinos, and each place has their own restaurants and bars, etc. But it is essentially one unit, uh, operationally speaking. If you cross over from Fashion Show Mall, you'll enter at uh, the Wynn, um, and you'll enter into an area where there is a short uh, collection of shops, the uh, Wynn Shops area. Uh, again, now you're looking at uh, the kinds of places that will, uh, will set you back uh, thousands of dollars and where not a lot of people are actually buying things. Uh, but again, it's a lovely shopping uh, sort of, uh, you know, arcade of sorts and will lead you into the Wynn Casino. And as you come into the Wynn Casino, you'll come in by a beautiful display of flowers. There's kind of a merry-go-round of sorts there. It's certainly a key spot if you want uh, some pictures or video uh, of the Wynn to take home with you, uh, just like the little uh, water display outside of the Wynn, which you'll also see just as you're coming in. So. Um, it's a good spot to stop, take some pictures, uh, get, your, get your Instagram on. From there, probably the smart thing to do at the Wynn is just make a nice circle of the property. Uh, you'll see most everything you want to see. Uh, you'll walk around to where the uh, parasol up and down. And I think one of those two uh, bars is currently being renovated. Uh, if someone can let me know what that is, I can't remember off the top of my head, but uh, uh, certainly a popular area to check out. And as you go around the property, you'll also encounter the uh, fairly impressive sports book, um, you know, high limit areas. Um, I, I like the casino a lot, quite a bit at the Wynn, um, but it doesn't necessarily have any particular, you know, attractions to it outside of the ones that I've mentioned. From the Wynn, you'll have an opportunity at one point to veer down a long hallway and make your way to the Encore which looks very similar. Along the way, you'll encounter one of the main nightclubs there at uh, Wynn Encore, um, as well as you'll be able to see some of the pool area there at, uh, as you get closer to Encore. There's a number of bars and restaurants. There's a couple of theaters there where there are various uh, shows, although I don't think there's actually a resident show anymore. It's mostly just uh, sort of headliners at this point. And then eventually you'll make your way down to Encore. Uh, Encore, perhaps most famous uh, beyond just... Uh, being a part of the Wynn Enterprises uh, for the Encore Beach Club, which certainly attracts quite a crowd uh, when it's up and going in the summer months. So uh, it's a smaller casino, a nice place to uh, hang out as well. Uh, but both properties that really don't have a lot of attractions as far as, um, you know, the kinds of things you're going to sort of ogle as an out-of-town visitor. But they're beautiful properties and definitely worth checking out. So um, after you're finished taking a look at Encore, you'll want to make your way back to the Wynn and uh, you're going to make your way out through the front door. And from there, you're going to make your way across another pedestrian walkway 
and visit Palazzo and Venetian. We're not going to do that today. We're going to talk about that next week on the show. So thanks for hanging in there this week. Uh, the show kind of was patched together at the last minute. As I said, I wasn't sure we were even going to do a show this week. Um, so uh, um, if we seemed a little off, maybe we still are. Uh, but uh, I'm glad to uh, be back with you all and uh, look forward to uh, visiting with you all again next week on the next episode of Vegas Weekly. Until then, I hope you have a great, lucky, and healthy week. We will see you soon. Bye-bye.